Hey, this is Preston Zeller. Um, I am just going to probably ramble here a bit about um, anticipating the sort of anniversary of when you lost somebody. I think there's um, something about getting closer to that day that makes a lot of us kind of restless. Um, so I have my brother's uh, three year anniversary of him passing away coming up tomorrow. And this week's been kind of weird for sure. Um, a bit like, you know, thinking about what I want to do to remember him by and what my family's going to do. And, and so, um, you know, I just thought I'd share what we're going to do. And then also some other ideas. Cause I see a lot where, it's coming up, especially the first year, um, that one year anniversary where it's, it's just really a year marks this like pivotal, um, point of like that very early period, right. Where you're just in like such distress and, and feeling all these like crazy emotions from grief and trying to figure out what it all means for you still. And so three years out, um, you know, one thing that we've decided to do is my brother's favorite food was pizza. Uh, like a lot of people who doesn't like pizza, but uh, he definitely enjoyed it some more than others. And uh, so we we grew up making homemade pizza. So that's what we're going to do. We're making homemade pizza. I got some uh, really good slow rise dough in the fridge. And so, um, yeah, that, that's one thing we're going to enjoy. We don't all get to be together physically, but uh, we're going to do that. But um, instead of the day, um, maybe being like this ominous, fortuitous, um, kind of or foreboding, I should say, uh, day, I do think it's an opportunity to like reflect on, you know, how have I been living my life? How do I want to live my life? Because you know, the, the reality is your person's not coming back and that's a really hard uh, thing to swallow for, I think a lot of us, you know, maybe you're still in this like denial phase, um, or maybe you're, um, just still embracing all of the kind of, um, you know, downward feeling thoughts and emotions versus, um, you know, embracing the joy and the happiness that you can have. And like, certainly I, I hope you don't feel guilty about feeling in any kind of joy, um, or having a laugh. Um, you know, that's another thing that I think can often be weighing down on someone is like, I'm not allowed to feel happy. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you are. Um, laughter and, and crying are, are releases of emotion. And so like, you know, why wouldn't you, um, embrace that? But, you know, the way I've looked at it over the years for sure, um, is that I want to live a life that, uh, you know, my brother can't live. I want to live <clears throat> doubly right? Um, not that I'm going to these like extremes, but I'm also like that much more not going to let anything hold me back. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it's kind of like a disservice in a way to the person that you lost to let that death hold you back. And to some degree, I think like, you know, we can feel, uh, guilty for trying to live an abundant life. Um, because you, you want to, continue to hold on to the pain and the misery that it has caused you, especially in the early days. Um, and, and somehow letting that go means you're going to forget about that person. But it's, I, I think it's quite the opposite by like, just embracing the, the actuality of them being gone. You're, um, more so, um, you know, using that as a way to, you know, honor them and, and that they're not there and living your life in a way that is going to be, um, you know, fruitful that's going to, um, produce something of, of value. And, and what is that value? You know, it could be just being, um, a good person, in your family to your friends. Um, it could be, you know, some kind of aspirations you have and going and pursuing those, but whatever it is, um, you know, using this sort of anniversary of your loss to, um, move into that mode, I think is, is super important. And I, you know, I do believe the sooner we, we do that, the sooner you can, um, move into this, this mode where you're, you're again, using this loss as something, um, to be, uh, to, to motivate you and to, to bring a, you know, kind of a bright spot amidst the, the darkness. And, you know, there's a saying that I, um, 
kind of came up with, but it's just to turn grief into greatness. And I, I think we do have a bit of a responsibility to do that um, versus um, just kind of staying in those early days of the, the shock and the, and the sadness. There will be that for sure. There is the sadness, but um, you know, it doesn't have to all be sad. It doesn't have to all be depressing. It doesn't have to all be something bad. Uh, it could be something that really kind of works um, in, in your favor in a way. And, and again, like using this anniversary day and, you know, if you had music you listened to with that person, if you um, had certain games you played, if you, you know, certainly food, uh, that's a, re a really big one and doing that with family and friends. Um, but being, you know, communal about it. And remember that like, you're, you know, um, no one just loses, you know, leaves behind one person. You're, you know, I think in the U S it's, they leave behind an average of five people, five close relationships. So, uh, that was in a report I read somewhere recently. Uh, so there's other people I think who want to share this with you, maybe more than you, um, know or realize, uh, seek those people out. And, you know, even if it's just other grieving people who you've connected with, like go do that. And I think you'll, you'll be better off for it. And, um, yeah, anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any comments, like leave them below. I'd love to hear from you and, and just see what you have to say. So have a good day.